okay, first thing I want to do is get me a sip of coffee. I made me some cowboy coffee. And you can, if you listen real close, you might hear me slurp. I love slurping hot coffee. Man, that's good coffee. I'm going to be cooking this morning. Uh, I'm going to make some skillet bread. It's a real simple recipe, very few ingredients. And we're going to cook it on top of the stove. So to get started, we're going to start with two cups of self-rising flour. If I can get two cups, I don't know if I can get two cups or not. Two cups of self-rising flour. Then we're going to put a quarter of cup. Quarter cup of cold butter. This here sliced up in little chunks. Cold butter. And we're gonna take this blending fork and we're gonna blend it together. Gonna mix it up a little bit. Put this butter in that bread. Makes it good. Y'all remember Justin Wilson? I still watch him occasionally. Cajun cook from Louisiana. And uh, he used to it tickle me the way he talked. He would say that he's going to fetch the cow over the fence some hay. And I would say I'm going to throw some hay over the fence to the cow. But Justin Wilson would say I'm going to fetch some Hay over the fence to the cow. I know what do you say? I fetch. I don't even know now what I said, but fetch over the fence some hay to the cow, or something like that. But anyway, whatever I said first. <laughs> so I went fishing yesterday, and I caught about twelve bass, small male bass on the river. First time I've got to go on the river in a while. <clears throat> and uh, the bass on the river are moving up to bed and the males were up in this area that I was fishing. Now, I don't know if it's a second round. I did not find no bigger female bass yesterday. So, okay, so I've got this butter blended in this, with this flour. I didn't find no big bass. <clears throat> but I did see some males making bed, so I ain't sure exactly what female will, will move in there, I know, if they haven't already, most of them spawned. I don't know what's going on. The river's been up so much. <clears throat> so, then we're going to take some buttermilk. This is a cup of buttermilk. I'm going to put about three-fourths, three-fourths, hillbilly can't talk, three-fourths a cup in here. I'm going to stir it in a little bit as I go. That might be a little more than three-fourths, but we're going to stir it in and see what it looks like. I think it's going to take all of it. I think I'm fixing to put my fingers in here is what I'm fixing to do with my hands and uh, whoop, make me some, I believe it's going to at least take all this buttermilk today, just by looking at it. If it's not shaggy enough, I'll get you some more. It may not be. It may be. It may. You know how things are some days. Some days it takes more liquid. It's like my coffee some days, like this morning, it wanted to. It wanted to boil over. Some days, making my cowboy coffee, it don't boil over. And some days, you can't hardly keep it from boiling, wanting to boil over. You think you need some more buttermilk? Just a minute. This here is pretty wet. Well, let me see what I got going on here. Because it's got to be pretty shaggy. It's pretty dry. I think I'm going to have to have some more buttermilk. It's over there on the bottom shelf. You want me to get 
<laughs> you got you got biscuit hands. Now I got dough all over my biscuit. I'll get it. All over my hand anyway. Okay, so we put in another quarter cup of buttermilk. And my wife calls this shaggy, but it's wet. It's not pourable, but it's it's kind of a wet dough. So what we're gonna do is get our skillet ready to go. We're gonna put in a couple of tablespoons of, we're using bacon grease. I guess you could use Crisco or uh, some type of oil that you use. We're gonna use a little bit of bacon grease. And we're gonna put it on low, medium low. I think on our stove it's between, what, four and medium? <laughs> Must medium low. Some people. You can see that. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Put in that bacon grease. Put in that bacon grease. Go fetch some over the fence. No. How'd that go? <laughs> I done forgot I had it in my mind twice. Go fetch some hay over the fence. Fetch the cow some hay over the fence or something like that. So there was, an, there was a gentleman by the name of uh, Mr. Gray that, I don't know what he lived, not even a mile probably from where, where we used to live on the farm. And he used to make this bread, I believe every morning, he'd make this bread himself. Uh, his wife could cook and everything, but he, uh, she was working at the time and he was already retired. And I'd be over at his house sometimes and I would eat this bread and I absolutely love this bread. Uh, I eat it with molasses, with uh, honey, or just with lots of butter, whatever. Uh, one of my favorite breads. And it's an easy bread. And we're gonna put it in here. We're gonna let this, this, is, this grease is getting melt, melted and I'm gonna roll it around so we'll get a little bit up on the sides of the skillet. And we're fixing to pour this batter in there and let it cook uh, you could put it in the oven if you prefer to probably around 400 degrees for 25 minutes or so uh, we'll see how long it takes to cook on top of the stove because I don't remember so I'm gonna take this and my dough and put in there. My bacon grease is all melted. And we're going to smooth it out, flatten it out just a little bit. You want to flatten it out good. What is this, a 10 inch skillet? Yeah. It's one of our better seasoned skillets, in fact, it's... I got my grease coming up the side. I might put this little bit too much grease in there. Ah, you can't put too much bacon grease. <laughs> you got it coming, it better be all right. It'll brown on top, oh, too, yeah. won't it? You can see that I'm not very talented at this. You're doing a good job. Not very talented cook. Can't cook like this wonderful woman over here filming me, that's for sure. I don't know. You make pretty good skillet bread. I cook an egg. And... You make better gravy than I do. So anyway. Looks good. We're going to leave it just like that right there. On medium low. Medium low. And we're going to put this top over it. Kind of be like an oven. Leave a little air space and let her cook. We'll see what happens. We'll come back and look at it and eat some of it, maybe. You're going to let it cook till it gets brown on the bottom? Brown on the bottom, then we're going to flip it over. And we're going to let it cook a little more. We might put a little butter on top of that when we flip it over. And what would Justin say about that? <laughs> I don't know what he would He would say, say ooh-wee. <laughs> yeah, he might say that. 
Uh, he would say something, I promise you. <laughs> Okay, I'm fixing to make me up one of my favorite things and Miss Lori's favorite things to eat is molasses and butter. So we're gonna take a little bit of butter. We're gonna take some molasses. And this is unsulfured molasses. And one difference between that is this is a mature cane molasses. It's very mature. They don't have to add no sulfur the oxide. If they use young cane, they'll add sulfur the oxide to it. And molasses is you can make it it's you got molasses, you've got backstrap molasses. The backstrap is dark in color and it's the amount of times that you boil it. So when you're cooking it off you get the water out of it. You this has probably got somewhere around 70% sugar in it, but you can keep reboiling it and, and, and you can make what they call a dark black strap molasses that's about 45% sugar and can be bitter in taste. And I don't, you know, I don't prefer to get, use it to eat like this right here. So we got that mixed up. Bread's about done. Okay, so our bread is, is pulling away from the sides, and it's, we've looked under it, it's time to flip it. And I'm gonna try to flip it. You can touch it on top, and it's, it's cooking, it's ready to flip. And I'm probably gonna bust it all to pieces. I'm gonna try to flip it. Good job. So. See how good and brown it is. Good and brown, ready to go. Put the lid back on and that cooked let's see 10 it cooked about 20 minutes 15 20 minutes on that one side so we're getting close roughly 20 minutes on one side when it got firm on top where well, we thought we could flip it over and we flipped it over and then we cooked it probably another 10 minutes it was probably done less than that but you can take your knife Stick it in there and see that it comes out clean. We let, let I let it cook just a little bit longer because I like it brown on the other side, maybe a little more. So you can take and cut this in pieces like you would cornbread, or you can do like I've done a lot, grab it like that right there. And just tear it off and eat it. Mm -hmm. It don't have to be pretty. You know how good that's going to be. Cut a big old piece or break you off a piece. Are you going to help me eat it? Why? What do you think? Look how pretty that got. It got just brown on top, too. Good and soft. Good and soft, ready to eat. Good old skillet biscuit bread. And we can take just a little bit of... A little more butter. Just a little more butter on that. It ain't like we're fixing to dip it in butter. <laughs> a little bit of soft butter. Or you could have put it over the top of that in the skillet. So, let's eat. So, we're going to get a piece of this bread. Just talking about how dark that 
molasses is. It is. It it's is pretty big. rich molasses. It's pretty rich molasses. It's grandma's. Uh, come from the store. Grandma's molasses or something like that. I like to use it when I'm making gingerbread and stuff. It's good for it's it tastes pretty good. It's not It's not like your it's not like backstrap. Backstrap, but of it's course a, it's a darker, richer molasses. Uh, uh, ain't really molasses at all. Well, like you said, the back I mean so the backstrap's a little bitter, isn't it though? A little more bitter. Yeah, it's all it's just it has to do with the cooking process. All right. But it's very good. What about skillet bread? That's what I'm talking about. Skillet bread is delicious. <laughs> and I love that kind of bread. It's simple and they don't take too long to cook and it's it's good. Good stuff. Some people would think that that's a poor man's breakfast, but we're very fortunate and lucky to have this good food. And we thank God every day for the ability that we have to provide for ourselves and realizing that all blessings come from him. I want to wish everybody a good day and a good few more days till you see us again and God bless everyone.